This is my first time reading poetry at a poetry night. There's some safety in writing poems and putting words on paper and then pushing those words into a book onto a bookshelf that somebody may or may not read. Standing in front of an audience and reading a poem and just showing them that vulnerability yourself. I've never been a musician, I've never been an actor, I don't know how to perform on a stage, so I have something to say and I want to share it, and I think that reading some poems out loud in front of a room of other people who appreciate that art form, it'll just be a big step in continuing to confront my insecurity with this whole thing and gain confidence to continue to pursue this part of my life. All right. Poetry is really personal. Like a lot of times I think it's like I'm just publishing my journal. I've always had, you know, a belief that I've got something to say, something that's worth putting out in the world. So just reading the end of my seven-year-old autobiography saying, when I grow up, I want to play football and write books. I like to write because it is fun. I thought that was <laughs> kind of funny. And this one, it's funny because it's a, it's a rap. Oh yeah, 10 years old. Mama rap, you could not have named it something better. Beginning of my hip hop career, rapping about my mom and french fries. Just so much of this being about family and love. To me, the other thing is just overcoming adversity, which really jumps out in this poem. You know, your rap, not so much. That's, you know, pretty much about french fries, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am still writing poems about mom. <laughs> no raps, though. Huh? No, no raps, raps. now, just poems. Although, we'll see. Maybe I'll be rapping them tomorrow night. <laughs> I love this city, I love the way it feels over here in this area, and it's really cool for me to perform and share my art, at least verbally, for the first time in my home city around my people, my friends, my community. I'm gonna read two poems. The first one I wrote about what this might be like. This is my first time reading poetry at a poetry night. Some nights I lay in wonder. Would they like my spoken word? If I went to a poetry night, would I even have the courage to get up on a stage in front of artists wearing beanies and spill out my emotions? Would they really want to see me? And will my optimistic sermons all be worth it in the end? Or will I die and learn that heaven was only ink spilled from my pen? And it was my ego saying I could do such good that if I left behind some musing, I'll have done all that I should. Some nights I lay and wonder if I want success at all. Would Humpty Dumpty be a legend without his fateful fall? And can I make real art when I think so much of fame and the money it could bring me if I wrote down all my shame and somehow made it rhyme so it was easier to read and other people relate to it thinking, maybe they're like me. Is there any poet out there, please, anyone in here who watches corny Netflix and drinks too many beers and writes about the weather changing and how we should follow suit and be like trees that reach up for the sky, sturdy in our roots. Maybe I'm downselling. Maybe I could help others. Maybe listening to my stories feels like lying under covers, here to keep you warm and make you feel safe. Maybe sharing my emotions is a healthier escape. But the problem that I see with that optimistic preach is if I don't have problems, are the answers out of reach? And if I don't have answers but ask questions on a stage, Am I just a singing bird whistling in an empty cage, believing that there's magic in my every pretty song? So certain that I see it, but seeing it all wrong. Yet here I am at poetry night, and I see a beanie or two. <laughs> but even if you snap for me, what really did I do? <laughs> so the second one's uh, about my mom. Uh. With my mom, so many of the lessons that she's taught me live throughout my poetry. To have a chance to show her that I'm doing it and living my life in the way that she always encouraged me to, it's really special. And she's, you know, my best friend and my biggest supporter. So it means a lot to be able to share this whole process with her. For 25 years, you were a superhero. An unnatural, unbreakable force for good. I don't have one memory of you losing your temper or making me feel in any way not enough. You were invincible. Even when your brother died, 
He took a million shards of shattered heart and molded it into a piece of art so spectacular and true. It changed the way I saw the world and myself. Then in year 26, or seven, I met you again. I met your demons. You showed me your wounded hands that no longer allow you to carry it all. I saw the ways you've been hurt, the worry, the fear, the reasons you waited to bring my sister and I into the world, all the burdens that you never gave us. And I realized, you're not a superhero. You're something different, something far more beautiful, more brave, my mom. <laughs> Love you. Scott called out my beanie like three times. <laughs> All right, everybody feeling good? My hope for young athletes and young lacrosse players is you don't define yourself by one thing. I go back to that advice my mom gave me, like the loudest message that I think lives in If a Tree Had an Ego is to trust yourself. And if you're a young athlete and you love music or you love poetry or you love painting, express it and do it and share it and follow it. And I think that when we listen to our own intuition and we trust ourselves and we follow our heart with what we wanna do, we become healthier and we become better members of our community and better stewards of the world. <laughs>